she's a fun girl. You're a fun girl. Bitch on arrival, star on departure. I didn't come here to make friends. I came here to make lasagna. <laughs> you ever put hot sauce on lasagna? No. Holy shit, it's so good. This week's queen reacts to her elimination. Join us the morning after when we talk to the queen who leaves Canada's drag race. Hit the subscribe button and that notification bell. Let's go. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm amazing, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, uh, but well, my name is Zane and this is Daily Hive, I guess you know, because you just logged on. Yes. How, uh, look at your setup. Is that like a marble couch, a faux yeah, marble my, couch? Mar my marble couch, I bought it from Chanel. Um, and then this is, no, I'm just joking, it's fucking fabric. <laughs> and then um, uh, this is, uh, that's just another backdrop. It's cool though, isn't it cool? I love it. I, I love, love it. it. I love it. And then it's like, it's all color coordinated. Do you like match your outfits to the backdrop? Uh, yeah, normally I do, but today I woke up late, I had to throw on a mug and put on the most comfortable outfit I could. Well, you look cute. You know what? I dressed up for the runway challenge here. I've got denim on denim on denim. Oh my God, chill out, Thanks. girl. <laughs> I just wanted to participate. <laughs> This is not okay, Zane's best friend race. It's the, uh, okay, so we are going to talk about the show, reaction. We're going to talk about what you're up to. And then we're going to end by you giving me a tip. The yeah, let's tip, do it. Okay? All right, so let's start with the elimination. Last night, you'd never even been in the bottom. And then you went. Like, what is up with that? What was yeah, your reaction right? to that? That's what I'm saying. Was I robbed? Well, it's like, I just like okay. everybody on the show is robbed. <laughs> yeah, no, but come on. Sucks. It kind of sucks because like, I really didn't want to go, obviously. Like when you get on Drag Race, you want to win. Um, but like, I was I was not doing the best. I was getting in my head and it um, set me packing, <laughs> obviously. Um, I The judges saw that I was really getting in my head. And um, unfortunately at this point in the competition, we're on episode six. Uh, they weren't able to keep me because of it. I like they're splitting hairs trying to figure out who should stay and who who should go. So, um, although it does suck, I am happy to be here, Oprah. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna work through this. By the end of this interview, we'll have worked through this process. Watching it back, uh, how did you feel watching that number, the Alicia Cara number? It was it was good. Like I wasn't crazy on the lip sync, obviously. Um, I'm I, I say in my first uh, my first confessional, you know, death drop splits high kicks. I don't do any of it. I do kicks. I do uh, de not death drops. I do splits and I do cartwheels. So if I thought it was going to be a more upbeat song because of the runway, and then I found out it was Alicia Cara, she's great and all, but holy shit, that is a slow emotional song. So I was like not into it, but then watching it, I, I think I did a good job. Like I, I think you did too. I was feeling it. I felt, I felt Alona was doing too much. And I was like, oh man, I feel Boa. I feel uh, Boa. Yeah, I feel and Boa too. What do you think if you would pulled out some like tricks to be like, bitch, I need to stay. So I'm going to just bring the house down. Would that well, have you know been what's funny is like, I, I actually have done that before at shows. Like I'll do like, I, I will always love you by Whitney Houston or something. And I'll, yeah. I'll just dance the entire time. And I'll just do kicks and splits and like, <laughs> you fucking idiot. The looks. Okay. So Tom Green loved your look. It yeah. was reminiscent of his childhood costume. Uh, uh, Celine Dion, when she uh, thanked everybody, uh, thanked Canada's Drag Race for the thousand uh, nights of, or what was it the thousand looks of Cel thousand Celines? Yeah. Your photo was used. What does it kind of like mean to you to have these celebrities like always like connect with it your was, outfits? It's, it's so cool because like at first it was like, um, it was it was all Drag Race girls welcoming me to the family, being super supportive, and like I we all have our favorites on Drag Race, so like seeing like who liked my photo and who follows me and who commented is really cool. Um, and now it's like, it, it's like we're going to another level, and like I'm. I'm so thankful to have them supporting me. And now it's like, I'm seeing Celine Dion supporting me. And like, it's just so, it's so mind blowing. Like, oh my God. <laughs> well, talk about okay, your glow honestly, up. Honestly, if I was, if you, if you told me that Celine Dion was gonna put me on her Instagram story when I was like one or two years old, I would have probably looked at you and said, goo goo gaga. I <laughs> be, because I was a baby. You would have known who Celine Dion is. You would have predicted Instagram stories. And then you would have said, Goo Goo Gaga. 
goo goo gaga. That's exactly what I was saying. The out of the queens that you mentioned that you're saying like um, a lot of the the drag race queens before you who re responded to you. Who's the ones that you've uh, that's kind of stood out for you that you're like, oh my god, that person knows who I am now. Uh, oh my god, all of them. Like they're really all like so iconic. Um, Katya, I love Katya. She's, yeah. uh, she's like we're personality queens. And she's so loved from her, for her personality and her her quirkiness and her her um, her stupidity, and I love her so much for that. Um, so when she followed me, I was gagged. All the queens, though, like literally, like I can't even, I can't, I can't even aside from Kaja, I can't even name one, you know, because they're all just so fucking amazing. They're all legends, icon stars, incredible, gorgeous, brilliant, spectacular, put in a blender, show stopping. Linda Vagelista, you, I think, were underestimated when you came into the to the show. I think perhaps you were cast to be like a wild card, but then everybody, Absolutely. like you just said, love you. What do you think that was that everybody reson resonated that um, even Brooklyn's like, you're a fun girl. You're a fun girl. Well, she also said I was sexy, so. <laughs> Both. Um, you should have seen what they cut out of the episode, but that was not What did they cut out? Really. I don't know. You'll have to. You'll have to subscribe to my OnlyFans to see. <laughs> <laughs> I was just joking. Um, what was the question? Uh, the question was being the, a wild the, the, card. The, the surprise, being the wild, coming in there to be like. I think they were expecting you to be like the hot mess on the show. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Turned out um, to be like the breath of fresh air. Yeah, uh, you know, I I went in trying to be true to who I am, bring kind of an amazing, crazy package uh, for the show. And, uh, you know, like, I just, I use the resources I had to put together what I put together, and I'm really proud of it. And it's truly me. It really is me. And the moments on the show are me. And people are seeing that and resonating with that because I, uh, myself, like, humans kind of relate to me because I myself am a human. Yeah. I'm just joking. Uh, but, but no, like, I'm just real. I'm but, mean. like, you're authentic. So I didn't actually take that as a joke. I was like, yeah, you're not, it's like, a drag queen is like a crazy alter ego. It's an augmented person. But I yeah. think people related to the fact that you're like, man, I'm just fucking a dude in a, with, like, a tiny breastplate. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I won't talk about that, the side proportion there. But it's true. I think that that's what made you relatable, that you're like, you're, everyone's being a queen, but you're just also kind of, bringing it down on the level to be like, okay, cool, yeah, I can do that. Which one? I'm just here for a good time. I'm just... the, the, can you add, uh, tell me about your fashion philosophy? A, the question I have is like, the size ratio of the breastplate, and also when you're saying about bringing your look together, how did you do that to prepare for the show? Some people work with designers, some people just bring their stuff. How did you do that? Uh, I'm gonna give you one of those questions, okay? Because I am okay. not in now, handy. I'm just joking. Um, what I will say about the breastplate is I borrowed the breastplate from a friend um, yeah. and I've never had a breastplate before and I didn't realize oh. it was like when look like too proper with my proportions. Um, <laughs> it works if you have a bra because it's great for cleavage. So if you put a bra around it and you, and you stuff the sides, it looks amazing. But yeah. I didn't do that, obviously. And it looks so fucking weird. And then like, obviously I put my corset on and pushed them up a little bit. So I don't know what was going on with my breastplates. You got one I looking at you and one I looking for you. Right. And then putting your looks together, how did you do that? Did you do that yourself, everything? Or did you assemble like a family of designers and costumers to- uh, Like I said, I really just wanted to focus on being myself and, uh, thinking outside of the box so mm. everything that i did on the show was true boa it was uh different it was you know i i, I thought okay i i was like okay hair on me we're gonna see all these girls in mini dresses with hair on it, is what you're gonna see you're gonna see a lot of the same kind of thing which actually i was surprised because we did it because like all the runways were amazing um but i was like what can i do to really fucking separate myself from the pack and just be <coughs> crazy and stupid I thought that'd be so crazy to have like a hairy pussy and I did <laughs> you did it you did it very well Borat with um needing some manscaping yeah. the other queens on the runway who do you think was who were you in admiration of the stuff that they'd always bring over and over again Jimbo 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 Jimbo, Jimbo. I love yeah. Jimbo we had no idea who Jimbo was when she walked in 
And I was like, oh, this bitch is going to be so fucking annoying. But I fell in love with her. She is the one that I, I connected with the most on the show. She's so amazing. She's not just an amazing entertainer and queen. She, she's so good. Like, Jimbo, like, this is Jimbo's drag race, bitch. Literally, like, she is, like, she, she could punch me in the face, and I'd be like, thank you, Jimbo. She is also <laughs> the sweetest person ever. I love her so much. Like, she is a genuine, kind, caring person who is, I think, because they're from the art scene and not exactly the drag scene, they came into this with such a warm heart, and it's so nice. But some of these other bitches are fucking cold. <laughs> yeah, talk about that. I think what's really uh, enjoyable, I guess, I don't know if this is a good thing, but enjoyable to watch as a television show, what I think makes Canada's Drag Race more entertaining than season 12 of the American show, is that y'all are cutting into each other. You may be friends now, but you're saying what you think. Who did you not get along with during the taping? That maybe you're, obviously, I think your relationships are better now, but while it's happening, I'm like, there's some fire out. Uh, really, like... Uh... I kind of, we all got at each other's throats, honestly. If you watch the show, you'll see, like, me and Kine had it, me and Scarlet had it, me and Lemon had it, me and who else had it? Yeah, me and Kine, Scarlet, and Lemon. Yeah. And, like, I was just being me, girl, except for early end when I was, like, super annoyed and I was, like, tired and hungry. I just wanted to eat my lasagna and take a nap. And I was like, you're fucking fake, Lemon. Fuck you, bitch. I'm just joking. Um, yeah, and, and, like, we're all good friends now. Like, obviously, like, we're all just at each other's throats. You put a bunch of dry queen's in a little shoebox and shake it around. You're going to get some drama. That's what you're going to get. Um, and we're all just like tired and, and yeah, but we're, we're good now. I love her so much. She's sitting on me on the, with me on the couch right now. You just can't see her. Oh, that's nice. Hi, Levin. Yeah. You said when you left, you're like, you didn't come here to make friends. I came here to make lasagna. What is your best lasagna recipe in like five steps? <laughs> My best lasagna recipe is... Lots of meat. You gotta, you gotta load up with the meat, load up with the yeah. sauce. You gotta use a whole brick of cheese. Don't not be cheap on the cheese. And you ever put hot sauce on lasagna? No. Holy shit, it's so good. You gotta put hot sauce. Frank's, I love Frank's hot sauce. Put that shit on your lasagna. It is so fucking good. Okay, tips that we will try to apply. Uh, comedy tips. Obviously, you are a personality queen. Like you said, you're a comedy queen. This was a really funny challenge. What was that like for you to kind of be able to show those skills, especially with your team? Uh, yeah, it was great. I'm so good at, okay, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so with Drag good. Race, it's like, you get all these queens. I so, I dance, I sing, I act. Bitch, I'm none of it. I'm just fucking me. And I am still a sickening queen. I'm good at quick comedy. I'm good. I'm quick with it. I can talk to you on the microphone. I can be stupid. Um, and I, I am good at, uh, at, at quick comedy. Planned comedy is so hard. So the fact that we were able to do that kind of improv challenge with such a strong team of people, I was so excited. I was so happy. I felt so supported. It, I think we did a great job. And I'm glad that that was the episode I left on because if I would have left on like... Um, Episode one, that wouldn't have been good, or episode two. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's, it, was a, it was a good send-off, and I'm really happy with how it went. How did you keep your face together? Like, even just watching it back with, like, Jimbo, it's my special day! Like, just watching it was so funny. I'm assuming when you were making it, it just was hilarious. Yeah, it was a lot more intense being there than watching it. Um, mm. I don't know. I guess I'm just um, an amazing actress, and I should be nominated for an Oscar or two. Oh, okay, we're gonna take it there. Uh, <laughs> you know, your career is ahead of you. Crystal from the UK version came along and had yes. some advice. Uh, she just said, be clear and be transparent, but I don't know if that's actually a actionable advice, but watching other queens and getting to meet the ones that have gone before you, what have you learned so far and what do you hope to put that into your career? Uh, don't get in my head and don't be afraid to take the risks. Like, you know, like I always take risks. That is something I'm so proud of doing. You saw on the show, I took a lot of risks and most of them paid off. But then I started getting in my head. I started pulling myself back. So I need, you know, like go full force. Like do not hold yourself back because this is the boa that people love. And if you're holding yourself back uh, from doing things, you're holding yourself back from the world and you're holding yourself back from opportunities that may come to you. Being open and putting yourself out there, how did that go about to tell that story of yourself? Because that was pretty revealing. And it also seemed like a bit of a pivot because you guys were all complaining about bachelorette story uh, parties and then it went to that. And I was like, whoa, the show just got real. 
So yeah. how did that come about? And well, because to share that? when it happened, um, it was a public thing that kind of happened with yeah. my story. And then I got on Drag Race and going to Drag Race, I knew I was like, okay, like, this is probably something like, if this comes up, like, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to use this platform to, um, to do, do good with it, hopefully. And, and the, the topic of safety came up, bachelorettes, people pushing us and grabbing us. And I took the opportunity to talk about what happened to me. And it was like, it was, it was very emotional for me and, um, it was hard to do, but I knew I, when I was doing it, that hopefully one person was going to see it and it could help them. I think the drag is the, it can be, and not, it not always is, but I think it can be the inter, uh, the intersection of entertainment and activism. And when you just talked about right now about using your platform, why is that important to you? And how will you continue to do that? Because obviously people think you're so funny, but I think there's, like you said, there's a story that you wanted to make a difference in somebody's life. Yeah, because like I said, I'm like a real person. Like, and like, and we all have our issues and we all have our traumas. We all have our struggles. And the, and like, you know, like um, me, Boa, living in Canada, Toronto, being on a, an amazing television show is not the same as somebody living um in some rural city town who doesn't have the same resources. So I wanted to just make sure that I, I spoke out and I will continue to speak out um, because there are people who may need help and people who don't know what to do. And I actually came up with a video last night on my Instagram and it uh, basically I met with somebody, a counselor from the Toronto Rape Crisis Center. We filmed in Glad Day Bookshop where we spoke. Mm. We just had a little uh, chit chat about um, the community um, statistics, uh, tips, and resources for people who may be dealing with uh, violence, assault, abuse, um, or even people who might know of somebody. So I just really want to make sure that people know they're not alone. They can get through this. Everyone's healing journey looks different, and it, it gets better. Hmm. Boa, now we're going to pivot to the lesson portion of this yeah. and I understand you're gonna give me just a tip a makeup tip that I can apply so should I ever decide to become a drag queen I will be equipped yeah. with some of Boa's knowledge get out your highlighter okay so I have I don't even know what a highlighter does that's eyeshadow show me your palette that's an eyeshadow palette you didn't buy it properly but that's okay here's a we'll lady do. said downstairs this would suffice who, who where'd you get that? Shoppers Drug Mart. Don't buy makeup okay. from Shoppers Drug Mart. Are you lemon? I'm just kidding. Okay, um, just joking, I'm just joking. She, she won all that Anastasia bitch, so she's like loaded with makeup. Okay, take the white and uh, okay. I, um, ugh, I can't touch it. Just use your finger and like get the white and like, okay. you know, like you're pressing a butthole and then go on your, on your cheekbone, the high point of your cheekbone. And I like to take my finger, yeah, well, you didn't get the right product. So I like to take my finger and not do it this way, but do it this way. And With my middle it. finger. So wait, what's the difference between an eyeshadow and a highlighter? Like eyeshadow is for your eyes and a highlighter uh, goes on your uh, like cheekbones. It goes like. But is the product similar or not? Like you can, okay, like you can use eyeshadows. Like I've used eyeshadows as highlighter. It's like, I guess it's all the same, but uh, the, it, the colors make the difference, right? Right. Okay, yeah. so is it doing anything? I don't see anything happening. There you go. It's like slowly. Am I supposed to put that much is that shit on? Is that shimmery? Yeah. Is that bad? It's a disaster. You're stressing me out right now. <laughs> You're stressing me out. Look at you. You look like a whore. <laughs> Perfect. Learned, taught by Boa. Now what? Sure. Wait. Sure, whatever. Do do what you want. There you go. Yeah, looks that, great. Looks beautiful. That's, that's not, awesome. You can put some here, like right here? there. Yeah. 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 There you go. And then. Yeah, you you look beautiful. Perfect. That's it. Showing off my um contours. Oh wow. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Buff it out a little bit. Yeah, okay. Go. Um. Oh, Ooh, oh, that just got worse. It's a great color, actually. What palette is that? I want to get that. <laughs> Wet and Wild Fantasy Makers. Um, Wet and Wild okay. Fantasy Makers. Okay. Are you a preteen girl or? <laughs> uh, 
Oh, Boa, well, uh, I failed You're you. So I'm fine. so sorry. Oh. So <laughs> okay, well, I'll try this again some other time. But in the meantime, where do we find you on social? We want to check you, you can, out, find out what you've got going on. You can find me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Boa the Drag Queen, Twitter, B I T C H O N A R R I V A L, Fish on Arrival. Um, I am on every porn website. And oh. uh, yeah. What are we going to see on your OnlyFans? My bunions. Oh, you know what? It's always good to niche down. It's always mm -hmm. good to niche down. Exactly. All right. And mm -hmm. what is next for you, other than the socials and the bunions porn? Uh, what else should we be looking for you next? Oh, I'm gonna have the best nap today. I cannot fucking wait. <laughs> some lasagna. I'm gonna have a nap. I'm gonna take a bath. Oh, it's gonna be so good. You better put all of that on your Instagram stories because we are enthralled. You got it, bitch. You got it, Zane. Awesome. Thank you. And again, you know, I'll go buy some real highlighter. Thank you. Well, it's nice meeting you. You look gorgeous. This is the look, Mama Boots the house down. Yes, God, please. And thank you if you will. Oh, thank you, Boa. Bye. Thank you. Shante, you stay. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to join us when we chat with the latest queen to leave Canada's drag race. And check out these links for the convos with the other queens who have sashayed away.